Okay, everybody here, let's do something. So from that solid base, pull the head top up, relax your shoulders, relax your tailbone, bring your hands together in the center. And then while you're standing, make micro adjustments, pull the head top up higher, relax your brow, open your vision, open your nostrils and expand the sinuses. Connect the tongue to the upper palate. When we practice Tai Chi, the teeth are lightly touching. Relax your jaw. <clears throat> Pull your chin back, which means extending your neck up. Relax your shoulders. Hollow your chest. Feel, even though the arms are folded in this position, feel as though there's a space in the armpit, in a space, in the elbow, in a space, in the wrist joint, so that those joints are expanded so the energy can travel. Use the core, the center strength in your abdominal strength to, to support the front, relax and expand your lower back. Fold the insides of your hips, <clears throat> grip your toes and elevate your feet. So pull your ankle in and expand, or pull your heel in and expand your ankle. And grip <clears throat> with the toes, either pushing down or like a cat, clawing back. And then inside, on the breathing, we're lifting the base of the torso. So pulling up on the pelvic floor, pulling up on <clears throat> everything at the bottom. We're keeping the tongue connected. And then relax for a second. We're going to do uh, a little bit of standing and we're going to turn that very slowly into some, some Qigong. So take a nice comfortable shoulder width stance. Uh, you can make it so that your, your feet are just inside your shoulder width. You can imagine your shoulders as alignment points for the center of your feet, or you can imagine that your shoulders fit on the inside line. <clears throat> anyway, either any of those options, using the shoulders as a guide. And then I want you to see with your feet in that square position, make sure the toes are lined up forwards and back. See how much you can relax your tailbone. So, if the feet are parallel, this camera has a 
has a pretty wide angle of view. So even if I stand parallel, <coughs> they may look like they're off. But when you look down, your feet should be, should be parallel. And then from there, relax your tailbone. See how much you can allow it to sink without uh, having your, your knees go over your toes. So see your toes, and then push your tailbone back and away, and then come back to the posture. And so that's the, that's the basic stance. And then very slowly, just as if, as if somebody is lifting your sleeve so you can relax your arm completely. Allow your hands to float up, relax your shoulders, keep your back relaxed, just into this nice circular shape. You can think of keeping the, the elbows about level, so there's a curvature. It's curved in every way. <clears throat> and so see if you can relax in this position. See if you can, by using your breathing, by using your mind, by using your chi, if you can stabilize yourself in this position. And when we say stabilize, try to allow your back to relax. And then allow your arms as if, if, as if the relaxation is working its way out from the center. Your shoulders, your arms, your forearms breathing. And with each breath, we're lifting the base of the torso, and on the exhale, allowing that to relax. So there's a contrast. Check to see that you've got the corners of the mouth activated. Half smile is the minimum. And while you're breathing, I want you to see how slowly you can start to move. We're going to allow the hands to, to raise vertically as if they're on a track. But I want you to see how slow you can do it. So keep practicing. If you can see, I'm trying to imagine moving less than a millimeter at a time. And we're going to continue raising. So <clears throat> from that square stance, with the tailbone relaxed, keep breathing. Keep your body relaxed. Relax your back, your shoulders, your neck. And we're stretching the head top, just like the fingertips. So leave everything else is affected by gravity. We're just moving the hands super, super slow, upwards. The head top, the crown, is pulling up. Relax your elbows. And once the hands get past the face, once they get past your eyes, start to expand your, your spine, and you can turn your, you're going to turn your vision, and to do that, you have to turn your face upwards. So very slowly. You can go slower if you're moving at half the speed. That's great. So keep the body relaxed. Grip your feet. And send your mind. <coughs> send your mind into your body to see where it needs to relax as you're expanding. Let your breathing fill the entire shape. Keep your shoulders relaxed. Don't let this shape of the shoulder blade expand up. Keep it, feel gravity to know that it's relaxed. And then once you reach the top, take, take the deepest breath that you've taken all day and allow your hands to flow back down with the same speed. The inclination is to go faster because gravity is working, but you're controlled with speed. So grip your feet, 
And send your mind back through your body to relax. Relax your forearms. Relax your wrists. Relax your upper arms and shoulders. Do the same deep breathing that you reached at the top, the same long, full breathing. Let your shoulders relax, let your elbows relax. And we're going to allow the hands to go all the way back down to the sides. But keep moving at that super slow speed, breathing deep. When your hands get back down, keep them round as well, and then bring them back to the center. Very slowly, we're going to start breathing. So lifting, we don't have to move quite as slow as we were moving a second ago. Go at your own pace, inhaling all the way up. Full breathing, full relaxation. Try to match the inhale and exhale speed so the air going out of the lungs is timed the same for both. Long breathing. pace you're going, <clears throat> do two more of these, full cycle, go at your own pace, mind your breathing, the movement, Check at various points along the movement to see if you're relaxed. Practice scanning the inside of your body, the muscles, <clears throat> the feeling of tension, where it resides, and allowing your mind to put your body back into the correct shape. finish, go back to Tai Chi Harmony. <clears throat> Bring your feet to the center. Line up the hips and shoulders. And then bring your hands together in the center as well. And for connectivity, make sure the tongue is connected to the upper palate and connecting the energy cycle at the base by lifting. And then relax. <clears throat> We're going to do some, uh, a little bit of return to the basics to warm up. Now that we've been doing some very slow qigong and some breathing, we're going to uh, change things to the, the yin yang, and we're going to practice some basic X stepping. So I'm going to uh, <clears throat> face the other way to start, and then I'm going to face this way, and I'll change to some directions. But from, from the center, from where you're standing, pick a spot that is your 
going to be the center of your X. So if you imagine an X shape, that you are in the center of the X. And when we step back to the corner, the same thing we said earlier about your feet, they should be parallel in line. So we don't want, if, if we see this from the other direction, when I step backwards, we don't want the feet sticking out like this. In fact, we want to try to make them as mathematically and perfectly aligned as we can. We may not be able to achieve it. Different people have different uh, bodies, different anatomy. Uh, one of my teachers was bow-legged, and so his legs naturally uh, would, would aim outwards uh, from an anatomical perspective. If you can, keep the feet in line perfectly while we do this exercise. So we're going to step in the shape of an X. So from your center, when you step back, shoulder width wide, shoulder width deep. And then focus on sinking your tailbone. Grip the ground. Step forward. Grip the ground. And when you step forward, align your feet. And when you move your center over that foot, relax your tailbone. So the whole time, the tailbone is sinking with gravity. We don't want to have the tailbone going upwards. Let's do a, uh, let me do an example before we continue. Uh, one of the things that my teacher used to do was talk about the way old people walked. And in the very first class that I met TC, he was teaching a walking, Tai Chi walking exercise. And he did some different exercises. He said, he said, uh, this is how a monkey walks. Right? They use the same hand and same foot moving at the same time, right? Because it's, it's considered a, like a monkey style. And then he said, uh, this is how an old person walks, right? Like this. And you can't see, you can't see this, but the tailbone sticking back, right? Because I have my uniform on. And the posture is all terrible, right? This kind of walking. And everybody has the same problem. We all humans. And we all age, and we all age in the same way with our spine. So when we practice X stepping, make sure that your tailbone isn't sticking back. Allow the tailbone to relax so that it's in the correct position. Uh, he ended the walking tour tutorial by saying, This is how high T practitioner walks, right? With the correct posture, relaxed tailbone, gripped feet, breathing deep. Let's go back to X stepping. And remember, Brian, yeah, go ahead. Um, when, you're, when you're stepping back, don't you have to release the tailbone a little bit and let it move backward or or because if you're going to have your leg extended isn't there going to need to be some sort of releasing it's hard to keep the tailbone curled when you have the leg straight so this becomes a matter of uh, structural integrity and the two things that i have to say about that the first one is uh, we want to practice by using a straight spine the straighter a thing is, the easier it is to balance. The second one is, this takes time. So if you practice this kind of X-stepping every week, every day, you can cultivate the leg strength in the correct structure to be able to support yourself without uh, affecting that. Now, unless you're talking about some kind of nuance that I'm missing out on, uh, we should be able to keep the feeling of it sinking. Uh, if there's tendons that are activating during a certain part of a movement or something, that's that's okay. But it should feel as if gravity is pulling down, and and eventually that correct structure will also feel like we can feel the support from the chi below from the earth. So let's see if we can experience that by practicing X stepping. So pick a space that's your center. Pull your head top all the way up. Grip your standing leg. Your standing leg is doing all the work, even while you check to make sure the step is safe to step in. And from here, transitioning, now your standing leg is in the rear. So you can use that to support. Relax your tailbone, square step to the center. From here, don't raise the tailbone. Grip the ground. This is a tough leg workout. Grip, step. This is a very challenging Workout is the leg workout. Center. Grip. Pull your head top up. Relax your shoulders. <clears throat> Make your feet accurate. Put your mind in your tailbone to really feel. You see my feet when I step back? And then practice balance. 
So come, when you come back to the center, let everything re reset. Take a deep breath. Shake out your legs. If you're doing it correctly, uh, it should be, uh, unless you have a daily training practice, it should be, there's a challenge. So grip the ground, breathing deep. When you step back, Keep your tailbone relaxed, balance. And then come back to the center. Grip. Center. Forward. Grip. Center. Grip. Balance. Let's do another, another variation of it, which is leg control. So while, this, while the standing leg is balanced, we should be able to have full control over this other leg. So when you reach each corner, we can practice Jinji Duli, right? Golden Rooster. So from the center, sink your tailbone. By the way, for Tai Chi practice, for Tai Chi exercise, uh, we should try to have a level in mind in which we practice. If we have a, some type of injury, we may practice very upright, grass to sparrow's tail and ward off, just like I'm walking. But if we're training all the time, we may practice grass to sparrow's tail and ward off and try to keep this level for the entire duration of the session, right? This is a sort of a moving Tai Chi principle and a level that you can get to. So, grip the ground. Stepping back to the corner, grip. And then feel the level that your tailbone is. Keep it there, grip. Step back to the center. Square step forward. Grip the ground. Keep your tailbone level. Just raise the leg. Jinji the leap. And then come back to the center. And then stepping forward. Grip the ground. Jinji to leap. Center. Grip the ground. Jinji to leap. Center. X stepping is the foundation for Tai Chi stepping. So it's a great exercise. We can use it as uh, practice or exercise. Let's do the first section. And I want to keep the first two things, first three things we did in mind. The first thing we did is we're moving so slow. But it's continuous. But there's always movement. So one of my trades, I'm an animator. <coughs> And I work in uh, computer, computer graphics, computer animation, all different types of industries, television, film, video games, so forth. And one of the principles of animation is that a living thing is always moving. We never have a, a creature or a character stop entirely. Even if, it's, even if it's holding the position, there's a moving hold. Because in animation, we have to show it. We don't know on the screen if that's a living thing or if it's a, a robot or a device. <clears throat> in, for the Tai Chi practice, when we do the standing, we may try to achieve stillness. But when we practice the Tai Chi form, there's never a break. So if we put in a stop to say, this is hook, and this next posture here is whip, we may stop the form there, but it's similar to a cross section of a tree or a limb where it's only a partial picture of the movement is continuous. There's no break. So let's do the first section with the idea of the slow, continuous movement. The second thing we did is the breathing that matches. And the third thing is the strong step, gripping the ground and really letting the tailbone relax. So if you don't know the Tai Chi form, this is, we're going to do uh, the first section, which is about 24 postures. Some of them repeat. So pick a space on the right side, 
Grip the ground, pull your head top up, and align your body correctly. We're going to open shoulder width wide. Let everything expand, settle, and relax. Facing forward, keep your spine upright. Turn a circle, grasp the sparrow's tail. Square step forward. Ward off. Breathing deep. Grasp the sparrow's tail. Square step forward. Continuous motion. Like a river. Like a waterway. It never stops. Roll back. Join the palms together. This is press. Push. Look left. Glance right. Double press. Split hands. Step. Tailbone is relaxed. Breathing deep. Single width. Turning north. Keep the same level. Allow your head top to go up. Split. Square step. Roll up. Roll down. We're going to turn 90 degrees. This is crane. Opening the wings. So a pipa, brush knee, <coughs> press to the center, square step back. Crane, opening the wings, turn, turn, brush, press right to the center, brush knee, relax your tailbone for C step. Press. Brush knee. Keep it the same level. Holding the moon in the chest. Bamashwe. Corner. Breathe deep. Open. Focus power. Punch. <clears throat> to the left side. Corner. Keep your spine straight. Open. Focus power. Last week we said waist turn. Elbows and waist turning all the time continuously. Rufal. Press. Press. Turning 90 degrees to the north. This is return tiger to mountain. Tiger returns to mountain. Embrace tiger returns to mountain. Many names. Punch right. Punch left. Bring everything back to the center. How do you feel? When you, after you finish, can you go back to rela relaxing? Let's go back to Tai Chi Harmony. Allow your feet to touch. <clears throat> Align your body. Connect your hands in the center. And then recalibrate. Practice. Pull the head top up. Relax the brow. Open the vision. Open your nostrils. Connect the tongue internally to the upper palate. Relax your jaw and keep your chin tucked. Pull your ears back. Relax your shoulders, hollow the chest. Empty the armpit, the, the elbow, and the wrists on both sides. The core is supporting your tailbone 
and lower back opening and expanding. <clears throat> In sides of the hips folding, expand your feet, grip your toes, pronounce the arch of the foot. Now see how if you can keep the same posture, but keep it relaxed. So see how little effort you can use to maintain the correct. Start seeing if you can take muscles offline, relax your legs, relax the glutes in this part from your lower back to the back, upper part of the back legs. Relax your chest so you can breathe naturally. Relax your shoulders, relax your neck, your upper back, the mid back, and the low back. And then imagine just one point of energy at the very top, the crown, holding everything up, the smallest amount of effort to suspend the whole structure, the smallest amount to keep everything in the correct position. And then take a deep breath and see how the lines of energy feel when you breathe deep after relaxing. This is one of the goals of Tai Chi, is to be able to return back to our proper shape right away. So if we have to get twisted or contorted into some interesting shape, to be able to return again uh, in pretty much any part of uh, fabrication, the ability for an object to either maintain its structure or even more valuable is to return to its structure after having been uh, compromised. So the goal is for, for the Tai Chi is to remain upright and sometimes we, we change our structure to do things for fighting, right? And we may use this as can be valuable self-defense. There's fighting styles, there's whole styles of Kung Fu based on rounding the back and using that that round to straight as a source of like a bow for power. That's, uh, that's a technique. And so the idea is if we can return back to Tai Chi Harmony, return back to the correct shape faster and faster and faster. Because once in the correct shape, it's easy to maintain. And if we get into the correct shape overall, it's very easy to detect when we've gone out of it. But after some time, it's difficult to detect. And so we don't even know how far out of it we are. So we want to be able to return, 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 snap back into the correct faster and faster and recognize faster and faster when we have moved away from the, the center line of where our path is. Let's do Tai Chi some more. Any questions, thoughts, comments, ideas? Let's continue. Same thing we just did a second ago. We'll do the whole first section, 24 postures, something. The form on the screen, my footwork is shaped if we've taken this sort of L shape. Wow, look at what the computer's doing to the, my finger, it's all pixelated. Uh, and you put that on the floor this way. We take about four steps forward and then the rest of the time traveling this way. Uh, it requires a little bit of space, so feel free to move around. <clears throat> Allow your feet to touch. Bring your head top up. Return as quickly as you can to the, to the correct, natural, relaxed, upright state. <clears throat> Grip the ground. We're going to open shoulder width wide. Sink your tailbone. Send power all the way to the horizon and allow it to return back to your feet. And then sink, relax, and expand. Take a second while we're here. This is Tai Chi, Chi Chi, the start of Tai Chi. Imagine that you're in your favorite body of water, hot tub, ocean, somewhere, and it's warm and comfortable. Allow your legs to relax, allow your tailbone to sink and expand. Breathing deep, we're going to shift, drawing a circle to catch. Stepping forward, ward off. Breathing deep, draw a circle to catch. Square step forward, ward off. Breathing deep, inhale. This is roll back. <clears throat> Turning back to the north, palms are together for press. 
separate the palms for push. Look left. Glance right. Double press. Horizontal. Split hands. Hook. Square step. Waist turn. Elbow turn. Single width. Turn to the north. Relax your tailbone. Sitting. Split. Square step. Join the hands. Roll up. Roll down. Turning 90 degrees. Crane. Waist turn. Elbow turn. Tailbone relaxed. Breathing from the center. Square step. Crane number two. Play the harp. Press. Brush me. Owl. Press. Low sheet. Twist step. changing in yang corner opening punch one more yo bon lan shui we're almost there rufong still facing the side we can turn the waist press press turning back to the front this is return tiger to mountain. Roll. Punch right. Punch left. Bring the left side back to the right. <clears throat> Take a deep breath, relax. By the way, the ending of the form, uh, this is more Tai Chi. Tai Chi coming from a Taoist idea of the yin yang. And so the Taoists were not very strict about how they did things. And uh, my teacher TC considered himself a Taoist and this gave rise to all sorts of problems with his students. The students would complain and say, teacher, should I roll my hands in and press down or should I roll my hands from, from under and press forward? And he would say yes, because they're both correct. So we have to determine what's tradition and, and what's correct. Ending the form, uh, after you do return tiger mountain, it's traditional in Chinese martial arts to close the way that you open. So in this form, we open to the left to do our initiation. In the form, we then close that same side. In reality, it doesn't matter. You can do it either way. But to know, traditionally, in fact, this is, if you watch many, many Tai Chi forms, uh, you will start to see that's how most martial arts forms going. But there is a contrast. There's some forms closing in a different way. So uh, just a note on the closing. Before we continue, anyone have thoughts, questions, comments, ideas? You have just a real quick thing. When, you, when you're doing holding the moon, are you including that scrape? As part of that? Yeah, let's actually talk about that because I think we talked about that three weeks ago and I would like to talk about that again. So this coming off of Russian press and remember these postures, uh, this is a, another Taoist sort of dichotomy of the, the thing is while there's no breaks between the postures, this means there's continuous movement at whatever point is happening. But we can analyze different sections of the 
trail or river, right? So for anyone that's ever participated in any type of outdoor activity that mankind has tried to regulate, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you like to go to the river and get on a boat and go down the river, you see there's different areas that have uh, rapids and tur turns and curves and this type of thing. The same thing, I used to like to rock climb quite a bit. And so there are different, what they would refer to as routes up the rock. Some of them, some areas of the rock are more challenging than others. When you go hiking, there's a trail and they have markers along the way. Holding the moon in the chest is a section of the river where we assume that each of these martial arts postures that we've been trapped, that somebody has attained a hold of our structure or has connected themselves or something to us, so holding the moon in the chest after we do the press, we assume someone has done grass the sparrow's tail and then wrapped our, our hand, or at least at the very basic, grabbed onto it. And so our hand is trapped and we're sort of, we've, pre we've done a press forward, so we're on the front leg. And the first thing that we want to do is, is, remember, every Tai Chi posture has three phases, avoid, make contact, and advance. So this first one is the avoid. We shift the center line back this is, if my opponent has a hold of my arm, I can use my whole structure to pull that away, right? If you really want to test this out, if you really want to see what this type of body movement back is, go play with a young child that has something that they don't want to give you, or uh, you can encourage them to have a game of tug of war, or a, a pet that also wants to keep onto their toy or their rope or whatever. And you'll, this body, the whole body moving. So once somebody has connected us, we shift to the rear. We use our whole body weight. And this hand going forward is a counter. So if you imagine my fingers down here holding onto my wrist, the fingers here, this hand is sliding. And we use the arm as a track. When something has a track, it can go a lot faster. A rail gun is faster than a regular gun. And so like a train, like a bullet train, if the track is in place, we don't have to think about the, any type of restrictions for speed or braking. We use that track to, to attack those weak, small joints in the fingers that are trying to hold on to our thing. So this first one is the avoid, and the avoid happens to have a little bit of an attack in it. So as we shift back, that counter, remember, we're turning the waist, so the, the like shearing trees or bushes, this cross-body power to start to attack those small knuckles. If that doesn't get them to, to break free, then we have something else too. So the first one is here. The second one, make contact, is this hand is going over top of their weapons, right? So if they have their guard up, this hand is covering. A lot of times you're gonna find it on their, their elbow, if it's here, because you're gonna move that elbow out of the way. So we have the avoid. And then here, moving forward, I'm putting my, my weight to cover their weapons, and out of this movement comes the fist, right? That is, that's right, Mark, that looks good. <clears throat> so, this is holding the moon in the chest. So, after we do the press, when we shift back, we turn the waist and slide the hand up the, the underside of the arm to attack. That same hand is now covering, and the inside hand forming a circle to come up through the center and either kick, punch, step, kick, whatever, at the same time. So this hand is blocking this other hand in the front. <clears throat> so this is a theoretical idea. Somebody has connected to my wrist. I want to break free of that, cover their defenses, and step into the gate. And by the way, remember, Keep, uh, keep your hands inside of the, the box. So this same square shape that we talked about for X-stepping makes a square if I step forward. The same, if I use this doorway, there's a door frame here, I don't want my hands to go beyond the front too much of my box. Because if it's here, there's something the opponent can use to lead me away from my center. So it takes away from our the triangular structure, which by the way, let's go back to standing. If you make your feet parallel and you relax your tailbone and you relax your dantian, relax your shoulders, push your head top up, 
You can allow your hands to be in this round shape or not. Either way, I want you to feel the shape of either a triangle or it's more like an obelisk from your feet comes up to the shoulders. And then we have another triangle that goes up this way. Very strong, very structurally powerful just by standing. And then see if you can allow the, the chi to go to the outside, I'm exaggerating with my feet a little bit, to the outside of the legs. So the inside feels like, in France, they have a very famous arch in Paris. So see if you can feel the, the same shape of the inside of that arch is rounded, but the outside of that uh, architecture is square so that the outside of your legs is supporting while in the same triangular shape. You can do whatever you like with your hands. You can stand in any, any way that you, that you want. But I want you to feel the overall feeling. And we should have this same strong feeling at every point during the Tai Chi form. We should be like a moving mountain having this structure. If we have to change for one leg to go to balance or something, we should still feel that we can return as quickly as we can. Or some postures, we don't have to move the foot off the ground. We can, if there's something where we need to mind the feet. The same thing for advanced practitioners, anybody studying Bagua. In the beginning, you practice a Panibu sliding step. That's because you don't want to lose your balance. If you have to deal with somebody, they can strike at any time. So like a tank, the treads are always on the ground. It can't be moved. But later, you'll practice your bagua with a, just a more flexible step. So the same thing. Uh, questions, thoughts, comments, ideas. Yeah, go ahead. Feel free. Anytime, by the way, guys. This is like an open forum. So. Um, uh, Brian, do you recall TC uh, mentioning in the Moon in the chest, moon that uh, it's kind of like stepping back into a bucket below the surface of the ground. Remember that? Um, he would say, when, when, you, when you push forward, right? Initially, you kind of go with them, you follow, right? You follow, then you kind of step back. Step. If you had to do it really strong, right? You had to do it really fast. You guys, you guys watching Aaron? That's because this is the way he's doing it. Is he's, if you can see, I don't know if you can see his screen, but I'll repeat what he's doing. He's making a much bigger movement. TC would show a lot of times, show these movements in a much broader context. If somebody really grabbed my wrist, I probably am not going to just go here. But, but this, uh, TC would say, use everything against them use the gravity against them. So a needle at the bottom of the sea, we connect to them and we use gravity on our side. In this particular case, the person is attached to us. So while we sink back, we can raise that up. It's harder for them to hold on to. And hitting up this way is a bigger, a bigger defense, a bigger clear. So sometimes when I'm doing this stuff, I make it more compact, but I, I uh, I'm, I'm hoping that my, my, I don't know if I have a screen record on this because the way Aaron was just doing it was very cool and remind me very much of what TC was doing. And yes, so this is, this is sort of a, uh, getting into a little bit of physics, but this is a Tai Chi principle is sometimes we have to go backwards to go forwards, right? Uh, where I'm at, there's a heavy storm happening and so the birds don't like to fly around in a heavy storm. And watching the birds, I could see if they're scared, sometimes they like drop their butt. And it's really fun looking. And then I realized it's because they're going to fly away after that. So the same thing that Aaron had just said, if you, if you didn't hear the audio, he said, sometimes we go along with the opponent just enough to, to give them some sense of security to break the, to break the hold. This is, a, this is a Tai Chi a Tai Chi way of thinking, a Tai Chi idea is we go, we go with the power we follow the power, and then we see where the right moment to break the power is, how to cover and how to move forward. And so, uh, the, three, the three things, ting, uh, hua, na, and da, <clears throat> the avoid, 
The avoid means we may go with them for a little bit before we avoid. The, the other thing too is uh, this idea of maintaining the box, keeping ourselves, keeping the hands inside the box. That's perfect scenario, right? So we're learning, uh, this is our, our, uh, ten, our 10 minute warning beeping at us. <clears throat> this is perfect scenario. So if we were calligraphers or painters learning to, to write the characters, of course, when we practice Tai Chi, it's like practicing the font perfectly every time when we practice. But when you go somewhere, when you go to the, the big event and uh, everybody's taking pictures of your gallery opening and they say, sign the painting, you put in something very fast and rapid. It doesn't even look like the, the characters themselves. It looks completely different. So your Tai Chi, when you execute your Tai Chi, it, you may not keep the correct, right? We said when we box or when we fight or when we're nervous, this, it may change. But the goal is how quickly can we get back? When you feel that you need to use self-defense and you feel nervous, how quickly can you recover your, your shape? Maybe before the interaction has even completed something like this. So yes, what Aaron has said is correct. We may, instead of trying to trying to fight, and this, by the way, is starts to get into some, some more sort of advanced, uh, there's a Tai Chi Sansu form, which Sansu means freehand, which is like a push hands, but you can, has the idea of striking contained in it. And in the Sansu form, there's a moment where you allow your your opponent to, uh, their momentum, to move you a little bit, but only to the point of control, only to, the, we don't allow the opponent to have control of us. We just sense where their energy is going and follow just long enough to uh, use it against them. So, yes, Aaron, that's correct. Uh, if you didn't see what he was talking about after brushing and press, is the idea is they've contained our hand, and so instead of just immediately jerking back, is forming a nice power loop so that that power, we start to go with them and then round it to come back to our own. And so we can think of that as turning this, the big wheel of the waist, right? Is I can maintain control of that power turning by going with them and then bringing it back, right? This is a very basic, so that sort of turning and elbow movement. Any questions, thoughts, ideas on what we've been talking about to date thus far? Because if not, let's do the Tai Chi form first section one more time, <clears throat> and then we'll do a little bit of closing. So allow your feet to touch. Bring the head top up. Go back to the correct alignment. Go back to the correct body feeling of relaxation. Go back to the long breathing. Activate your toes, connect the base of the torso, the tongue going to the upper palate. Breathe deep, open shoulder width wide. Tai Chi, Chi Chi. Once we start moving from the original stance, it's continuous motion. There's no stops or breaks. Grasp the sparrow's tail. Like winding silk onto a spool, slow, steady, continuous motion. Join the palms together. Deep. On. So, U, Yu, Pan. Peace. 
step press, holding the moon in the chest. Bottom on way, corner, parry, punch, hold that thought for just one second. On the other side, continuous silk reeling movement. One continuous arc. Punch right to the center. Rufong, so you keep your shoulders and elbows separated. Round, press, double tap. Turn back to the north. Return tiger to mountain. Close, punch right, punch left, return back to the center. Take a deep breath. We have just a few minutes. Anyone have questions, ideas? Let's, uh, let's do some Qigong to close. We'll get on with the weekend. So take yourself a nice square step. Make sure your feet are parallel. Straighten your spine, breathing deep, as if you're taking in as much air as you can, and then just relax. Naturally, let the air drift out of your lungs on its own. So breathing, full inflation, and just relaxing to let the lungs do the work. Grip the ground, keep your pelvis straight, facing forward, relax your tailbone, or just turning at the waist. Two more. Go at your own pace. And on the second one, on the last one, when you reach the center, just allow your hands to float. Do the same exercise that we started with, super, super slow motion. And then bring your feet together, bring your hands together in the center. <clears throat> Put your mind into your dantian and imagine like a magnet or a war cord, a tractor that brings in all the information, all the energy, all the ideas that you had during class today. They go into the center and they're stored there for later. So take a second to smile to yourself, just at yourself. And on the inside, it doesn't have to be audible. But take a second to give thanks to yourself. You have a body that's capable and a mind that's capable of learning and doing Tai Chi, some very complex ideas. <clears throat> and that's it. Enjoy your weekend. Paul text, right? <laughs>